It seems that there may be a problem with the onboard systems on the AC-40s. Most teams have experienced uncontrolled nose dives. The latest was the American Magic and the French Challenge teams. These are top-level crews. Remember these boats are to be sailed competitively by women's and youth teams. Basically both Corinthian foiling teams. Now let's look at Sailing Illustrated's coverage of the Orient Express uncontrolled nose dive. <laughs> Gosh, I hope everybody was holding on. I, I, you know, these boats, these are the AC-40s with automatic flight control, but yeah. there must be some kind of a manual override. There must be something else going on because it doesn't look like the automatic is working all the time for most, if not all, the teams. I think it, it, they shouldn't have automatic flying anyway. Well, anyway. I think that they ought to have sailors sailing the boats. I think most yeah. of the FOSI on here agree. You want to see that video one more time? Not really. <laughs> you know, one more time. Okay. Let me go back up. We'll show it one more time. Oh. Oh. Uh. This is your weekly global sailing highlights, World on Water show. September 8th. 2023. The first two days of the 33rd Maxi Yacht, Rolex Cup, have presented the fleet with a mix of conditions, both sublime and challenging. For the elite crews, the early competition has drawn heavily upon their skill, determination and prowess. For the spectator, the exhibition by some of the sailing world's largest and most powerful yachts has been compelling and inspiring. Showcasing superlative design, talent, organization, and location. The Maxi Yacht Rolex Cup. The 33rd edition of this spectacular event got off to an exceptional start in Porto Cervo. Amid perfect sailing conditions, as an impressive and diverse fleet took to the turquoise waters of Sardinia's Costa Smeralda for a regatta to savor. Some of the finest yachts in the world are in action across six classes, reflecting the depth and range of maxi yacht design. Elegance, tradition, power and grace, performance, and for the first time, maxi multi-hulls. Club Costa Smeralda opened the week-long regatta with two exemplary days that featured windward lured courses, as well as coastal racing through the stunning scenery of the Madalena Archipelago. Among those setting the early pace, Svea, Leopard 3, Proteus, and the all new Super Maxi Y3K. Join us again for more updates as this prestigious regatta continues to unfold. After conceding two race wins to real team sailing on day one, Yen Gishard and the young crew on Spindrift, headed up by tactician Yen Joven, bounced back with full force on day two, winning three out of a possible four races sailed. In each, the fleet was compact on the race course, with the top four boats all coming into the mark roundings within seconds of each other. We had some battles with Spindrift, explained Real Team Sailing's tactician Sebastian Colonel. I think we can be a little bit faster upwind. Yeah, here on day two of the uh, TF35 event here in Machesine was a great uh, day of sailing. Like, between 12 and 15 knots, four races, full on. Uh, we had a great battle today with uh, Spinrift 
We enjoy a lot the day. The, the crew is very uh, satisfied with how we sail. Um, we have a few things to, um, to improve, to get better a little bit. Yeah, um, today um, we, we think we can be a little bit faster upwind. We've seen a few things from the others like uh, Spin Drift and, uh, and Contour Immobilier. It seems a little bit faster upwind, so it's something we work on already in the last two months. Uh, it looks like they are a little bit more stable in trim. We're going to work on that for tomorrow. Thirty-five boats is a record lineup for what has become an unmissable event, which has continued to go from strength to strength since its creation. Now sold out, the Defi Azimut Lorient agglomeration is the guarantee of an epic Amoka festival in Lorient, Brittany, from 19 to the 24th of September 2023. With less than three weeks until the challenge commences, we get the lowdown on what we can expect and the organisation. In the Ilka 6 Gold Fleet. Although only 10 races were completed it was all down to the last race. Ben Elvin had unfortunately had a shocker in race 8 with a 40th and a 14th in the final race so was out of contention. A 20th in race 7 for Chloe Elvin had ruled her out. So it was all down to the last race. Thomas Grit had to beat John Emmett by 5 places to take the title it was not to be, only managing three places. It finished John Emmett first, Thomas Grit second and Chloe Elvin third.
The South Pacific Superyacht Regatta will move from the Bay of Islands to Auckland next year. When the New Zealand Millennium Cup is raced from 23, the 26th of February 2024, it will be with Auckland, the city of sales, as its backdrop. The regatta is known for fun, exciting racing with a Kiwi flavor all of its own. Although the 44 Cup Cows Championships finished a few weeks ago, the regatta video coverage, which was conducted by the video producers, Icarus Sports, has this week released a video of the best shots of the action. We thought that you would like to see this fantastic video. The red sun rose this morning, dark skies pronounce your into reality in the lab with the formula in chemistry the memories spark and motivate and make the industry shake we put the bars in the place i'm talking one one chance at best yes painting pictures for the culture keep the pressure fresh flip the cover with the drum of passion never rest freedom is our teacher under pressure now we bless see i was so good for the glow it's one art one shot now the future is yours go yeah it's one all one shot, now the future is yours, let's go!
With only two races sailed due to light winds on the final day of the TF35 Malsasin Cup 1, real team sailing, skippered by Jerome Clerk, who have clinched the victory at every event of the 2023 season, claim the annual TF35 trophy with one event remaining. Here we have the action from days three and four. On a essayé de naviguer euh, aussi euh, un petit peu différemment au pré. C'était vraiment le but, c'était d'augmenter un peu notre vitesse et nos empanages. On a les deux objectifs aujourd'hui, donc euh, ben ouais, on est content. Ça fait une bonne journée du coup. C'est des choses qu'on a beaucoup travaillé en début d'année. Du coup, on a les automatismes qui arrivent à revenir et c'est assez chouette de pouvoir les poser là avec un peu plus de vent. Et... Bah ouais, quand tu fais une jolie manœuvre sous le vent, ben, tu te dis que c'est chouette parce que ça accélère vite. Quoi. On a effectivement une bonne régularité en troisième place, mais on aimerait bien être plus dans les deuxièmes et les premiers. Là, on a de la peine à coller à Spin Rift et Rim Team. Il nous manque un petit peu de vitesse, un petit peu de tactique. Aujourd'hui encore, je trouve que c'est très serré, c'est assez difficile. C'était vraiment une belle, une belle semaine de navigation ici à Malchésine sur le lac de Garde. On a eu des conditions parfaites. Ça a été une belle bataille avec Real Team du jour 1, de la première manche jusqu'à la dernière. C'était à celui qui gagnait la dernière manche, qui, qui était premier au général. Donc bravo à eux, ça a été une belle bataille. Voilà le dernier jour du Grand Prix de Malchésine. Encore deux manches aujourd'hui dans des super conditions. On s'est bagarré jusqu'au bout, jusqu'à la dernière manche avec Spin Rift. C'était un peu le chat et la souris, à toi, à moi. Et bon, là, on a fait réussir à faire la différence sur la, sur la dernière manche grâce à vraiment un super état d'esprit, un bel esprit d'équipe de Real Team. As we covered earlier in this week's World on Water, and after numerous incidents, Emirates Team New Zealand this week released a video of Nathan Outridge explaining the onboard systems of the boat, including the autopilot. We hope this explains a little on what is happening on board these boats, and how they hope that going forward, these incidents will not occur again. But to make it simple and easy as possible to sail for the Youth America's Cup and Women's America's Cup, The systems on board have been designed so that it's actually quite an easy boat to sail despite how complex it is. One of the things that makes the boat so easy to sail is the autopilot. So there's a simple button here on the left hand side which you can just switch the boat into autopilot mode and then effectively for flying the boat you've got two real inputs. You can either adjust the height at which the boat sails or how much foil you have in the water with a simple plus and minus and then there's the trim so you can change the attitude of the boat more bow down more bow up and so you know for someone like myself who has a lot of foiling experience but never sailed a boat like this it's been pretty easy through the commissioning just with the way that the the autopilot software works so then the other uh, panel of buttons here is all to do with the boards up and down system so you got a board up button and a board down button you can also do a plus and minus on the cant system so effectively from this seat here you can do all the functions you need for, for flying the boat. So the AC40 sailed with four people. You've got two people on each side. As you can see, I'm in a bucket seat here and we've got another one at the back. I'm almost sitting on the floor, so you're incredibly low and out of the wind. And it's the same configuration on the other side. And then the aero trimmer sits behind you and they've got controls for the mainsail and the jib at the back of the boat. So one of the cool things about this is you can choose if you want to trim the mainsail or the jib, because every time you tack and jibe, you know, the way the boat's been designed and that the mainsail trimmer will be sitting on the windward side and the jib trimmer will probably be sitting to leeward because they have a much better view of the jib. So a simple button press will switch you from main functions to jib functions. And then you've got a bunch of push buttons. So you've got Cunningham control, 
the clue position, so you've got the car that slides on the clue, so you're basically creating more depth in the sail or making the sail flatter. When you tack and jibe, um, obviously the mast needs to rotate, so a button actually lights up, it turns purple, and you push that button and it rotates the mast. So there's a lot of software that's been developed in the background to stop you basically doing any damage to these boats. So, you know, if you're overpowered, you can just hold your finger on the Cunningham, you pump it super hard, it hits a pressure relief, the lights up and says you're at max load and you can take your finger off the button. So effectively, you can just focus on how much power you want upstairs on the sails and, and what kind of heel you want. And so you got one hand on a joystick doing your heel control and then your other fingers are doing, you know, your, your standard Cunninghams and outdoor setups.